Wow. wow. Think, Think about, about that. that. We're, We're under, under his, his wings. I am, I am so, so thankful, thankful that his grace is above my sins. sins. Think, Think about, about what I just said. His, his grace, grace is over your sins. sins. His, his mercy is new every day. day. Aren't, Aren't you thankful, thankful for that? that? Man, Man, what a, what a wonderful, wonderful God we serve. And, and then, then he, he says, says he's our defense. defense. I'm, I'm so, so happy for that. To know that I have a high tower I can go into. And I have the wings under the Lord I can hide under. And he just gathers us. I'm thankful, thankful for God, for who, who he is, and how, how great he is, the creator of all heavens and this earth, how wonderful he is to each one of us, and he meets us where we're at. That's one thing about Jesus. He meets us where we're at, and he takes us where he wants to, not where people want to. Amen? We serve a wonderful God. Remember, everybody's in a different place. That's, That's what, what we, we have, have to remember. remember. Not, Not everybody, everybody is as holy as you guys. guys. Remember, remember that. that. All, All of us need help once in a while. while. We, we need, need to get, get on our knees and repent and get going. Amen. I'm, I'm just thankful, thankful that Jesus loves us. us. No, no matter, matter what, what attacks we're, we're facing, facing, no matter what tribulations, no matter what the seas look like, no matter what the desert feels like, he is there. And that gives me hope. That makes me happy. I just, I just continue. continue. I, I know last week I, I explained the difference between God so loved the world and the world that we're not to love. And then I did on hope and then on faith and charity and all the wonderful things and uplifting services that God has been putting on my heart lately. Today it's going to be no cross, no glory, or no cross. You will not see the kingdom of God. And it's, it's a wonderful little put together teaching because it really, really opens our eyes to who we are in Christ. Christ. Amen? Aren't, aren't you, you, seriously, aren't, aren't you happy, happy that you serve Jesus? Jesus? Sometimes, Sometimes I'm just thankful because I have the blessings of God upon us. us. You know, you, you don't, don't know where things come from, but it comes there. there. You, you don't, don't know where, where things, things just get, you know, you know they, they hand, hand you things. Hey, <laughs> Georgia. He did. It's, it's just, just a, a blessing, blessing to know, know that, that we have a God that loves us so much that he cares for us. And, and I, I, I'm, I'm telling, telling you, some of us, as myself, need the Lord more than others. others. You know, you know we, we fight this fight, this, fight, this war, war, we run this race, and, and it's, it's a race, race we're running. running. And, and you, you know, know, I was talking to Kim, we were talking this morning, and I'm saying, man, if I'm not being attacked, I'm a little worried. You know, I, 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 I know I'm getting attacked, attacked every day. day. And Paul, Paul said, put, put the, the armor, armor on. on. So, so I know that, that we need to have an armor because we're being attacked. attacked. And, and I don't, I don't look, wake up this morning and, and say, hey, look, I'm going outside. outside. I see how many arrows can hit me. me. I'm just I'm putting my armor going outside and say, I'm going to praise Jesus. I'm just going to praise Jesus. Because, see, I have made a decision to make him my Lord and my Savior. See, See, on, on the, the cross, cross, I've told you before, he's already the Savior. It's, it's our, our, our job, job to make him the Lord of our lives. Are we going to serve him as a song and say, I am going to serve the Lord? Lord. Sometimes, sometimes it's not very pretty, and sometimes, sometimes it's great. But, but my blessing is that I have a God that will never leave me or forsake me. And he doesn't matter what I look like today because he sees his son Jesus. Because if he saw blame, it's not pretty. But when, when he, he looks, looks down and sees the covering of Jesus over each one of us, it's a beautiful thing. So remember, walk with your chins up and your chest out. You are the sons of the Most High Living God. He has called you to be his children. And then what an honor for a God that created everything you see has called you to be his children. That's what you should shout. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Everybody turn to Mark chapter 8. There's, There's Bibles, Bibles in front, front of you if you didn't bring one. one. We've been putting, putting some in there. Mark, it's the, the second book of the Gospels. Turn to eight. eight. When, when you should get to chapter eight, eight, let me know. I'll, I'll hear an amen, amen from somebody as I take a drink. drink. Think. Okay, okay, amen. amen. Okay, on, on 34, 34, it says, it says this. this. And, and when, when he, he has called the people unto him, him and, and his disciples also. So this, so this wasn't just for his disciples, this was for all the people that he called. And he, and he goes, goes here, he said unto them, them, Who 
so ever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Take up his cross. There's a key word there. Jesus didn't say take his cross. He says take up your cross and follow me. Now, now, since you're there, there go, go back, back one book, book to Matthew, Matthew chapter, chapter 10. 10. Matthew chapter 10. I'm just, just going to give a couple verses, verses on this, this although each, each gospel speaks, speaks about, about this. this. And we'll, we'll go, go to, to verse 38. When you're there, say amen. amen. we got, got a couple of amens. amens. And he that taketh not his cross, again, your cross, he that takes not his cross and follows after me is not worthy of me. I think Jesus made that pretty, pretty sound, didn't he? If you don't take up your cross and follow me, you're not worthy. Wow, Lord, that sounds kind of hard. He's not talking about something that's hard. He's, He's talking, talking about, about you taking up your cross daily. daily. Look, Look at what, what it says here. here. And, and follow after me is not worthy of me. Look at verse 9. He, he that findeth his life shall lose it. it. He, he that, that loses his life for my sake shall find it. Say amen. How many of you lost your life as you know it prior to Christ? If I asked you how many of you had fun in your prior life, you raise your hand, I think every hand would go up. Wouldn't it? Because there is pleasure out there. But, but we, we lost, lost that, that life to gain a new life. life. Amen? Amen. Death. death. He, he said, said this, this, this word death, death here. here. In Matthew, Matthew 3, he said, He that taketh not his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Death, death of the flesh is new life in Christ. Christ. Remember that. Death of the flesh is new life in Christ. When you die of the flesh, you are living the life of Christ. Help the pastor out once in a while up here. Amen. Amen. Death to self, but resurrection, resurrection to life unto God. Daily, not, not once, but all the time. The cross is the pain of the self denial that is required. I'm going to say that again. The cross is the pain of the self denial that is required. That's the pain of it, the self denial of yourself. The flesh, the flesh that pulls on you and tugs on you to do things that are not right in God's eyes. And we've we all known know that because it's called temptation. We're all getting tempted. Jesus was tempted in all areas. I don't know if we're being tempted in all areas all the time like Christ is, but we're being tempted in our weak areas. Amen? Am I kind of loud out there? Am I okay out there? Am I kind of loud? I see hands. No. Which one is it? Yes or no? I, I, I hear feedback. feedback. Okay. okay, maybe, maybe that's, that's what it is. is. All, right. All right, sorry, sorry about, about that, guys. You kind of, when you hear this, and in your ear, it's kind of frustrating. frustrating. And that's, that's not, not called, called temptation, that's called <laughs> whatever, whatever that is, instrument. Okay, okay anyways, anyways, I want, I want to, say to say that again. again. The, the cross is the pain of self denial that is required. It is required. Jesus said it. You want to follow me? Take up your cross. Now, I was thinking about the cross. A little, a little bit, bit, and I, I hope, hope I don't, don't jump, jump ahead. ahead. To carry it was burdensome. It's disgraceful and was trying to the feelings. And was in addition to punishment. Think about that. Every person that went to the crucifixion had to carry his own cross. Jesus had to carry his own. Even after the 40 stripes and all that beating up he took and almost death, he was, he was so fatigued, fatigued and almost dead that he dropped to his knees and they had someone else help carry it. That's how bad he was. We, we have, have to carry our own cross. The cross, if you think about it, you're walking through the crowds of shame. That's what it was when you went through the crucifixion. You did something wrong. Us to take our cross today is to say that I'm dying myself. And I'm putting Christ on. I'm not going to walk in the flesh. I die of myself. So I'm going to bear the cross. And, and I'm, I'm going to die, die as blame, and I'm going to live as Christ. That's, That's what he's, what he's talking, talking about. You're, You're dying, dying daily. daily. It's, it's not, not just once. once. Christ, Christ died once, and he did it for once and all for us, and he didn't need to bear a cross. He did, he did it for you and me. me. Now, now he's, he's telling you, look, look at what, what I did. did. Now, now you guys, guys bear your cross. Die daily of self. 
And I guarantee you every one of us can agree with me we need to die of self. Come on now. Seriously, and it's just a thing that we do. It's nature of sin that came in through the garden. And it's still producing itself through each one of us. That we have the desire of the flesh that pulls on us constantly. It does. But we have power within his word. We, we have, have Christ. Christ. We, we have, have the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit helping us. us. We, we have, have the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit comforting us. We, we have the Holy Spirit, Spirit helping us and guiding us and leading us. When, when these things come upon us, we have him to show us. Amen? Here's, Here's the way to go. go. Even if we don't listen to the Holy Spirit or go the opposite way, guess who's in that way to catch us when we fall? Jesus. That's a love I can't understand. Because if, if I, I do, do it to you more than once, once, you're not going to be there to catch me the second time. time. Some of you might, the third, fourth. But after that, you get tired of him and say, hey, I have to get him. him. Christ never does that. He's He's there, there, he is there for us, and he, he will be until our last breath, breath because, because he has called you. you. And he's, he's not going to give up on you. Even if you're eating in the picket pins, slot that the one prodigal son was, he will still be there for you. I am thankful for that kind of a God. Amen. Amen. To follow Christ is to take him for our master, our teacher, and our example. That's what it is to follow Christ. He's your teacher. He's your example. If you want to know about Christ, read the gospel. See how he acted. See how he treated people. He didn't go up to anybody and deny them. He didn't talk about people. He loved people. There were lepers. lepers. Remember, Remember the, the disciples? disciples? Oh, no, don't touch him. Get, Get away, away from him. Jesus went up and touched him and healed him. See, Jesus is there for the weak. Remember the song? Because of my weaknesses, he is strong. I mean, think about that. Jesus never once looked and said, oh, that person's too ugly, I can't go up to him. Or that person don't dress like I should, so I can't go talk to him. Jesus loved all. I think, I think we, we can, can learn, learn a lot from Jesus. I really do. I think, I think you, know, you know, if we read the gospel, we see what kindness he was. Yes, yes he, he can be bold. Take up your cross and follow me. Who does not deny himself cannot be my disciple. You have to deny yourself. That's a commandment. It's easy to deny yourself if you have the help of the Holy Spirit. If you are filled with his spirit, you can deny yourself. But, but temptation, temptation still overrules us. us. I, 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 I tell you, if there's a pastor that can stand up there and say, I have beaten temptation, and, and I don't get tempted, and it doesn't draw me in, I think he needs to repent and get saved. Because it did it to Jesus, but Jesus was God in the flesh. Yes, I want everybody to hear that Jesus was God in the flesh. Timothy said, God manifested himself in the flesh. He manifested himself in flesh. The word became flesh. God's word became flesh. We have to understand that. One thing about the cross I want to say, you don't see Jesus on any cross anymore. He was taken off the cross. He was buried. And he rose on the third day. See, Jesus isn't on the cross no more. The cross is not something we worship. The cross, the cross is something we have to bear by denying ourselves. It's, it's not, not a symbol, symbol that we carry around and say, look at me, I'm a Christian. Matter of fact, I think if you want to do that, get a beam, put it on your shoulder, walk up down the street and say, hey, look, I'm bearing my cross. You might get called names. People might think you're weird. Right? There's this guy that sits out in front of a Yeti. Poor guy's going to get hit. He, he, he uh, I, don't I don't know how, how much, much mind he has there, there but, but boy, does he preach Jesus. I think I you've seen him. him. Natalia, Natalia picked her up, up the other day, and I was sitting on the corner in the most busy place, and all he says, when he sees the kid, Hallelujah! You need Jesus! Or he'll just go off on something like that, and he's loud. And I asked Natalia, she's probably seen him a lot of times, because he hangs out around the school all day, and then when you come out of practice, like, Josiah, Josiah will come down to practice. practice. He's, He's down, down at, at the bottom, bottom saying, you need Jesus. He's, He's screaming to everybody, everybody, kids, and everybody, you need Jesus. And, and I guarantee you, 90% of people, people, people think he's off his rocker and he's weird. weird. But he's, he's out, out there screaming, you need Jesus. He's doing it. 
He's shouting as loud as he can. Hallelujah. Now, he might be above the law. I don't know. I mean, I've talked to him a couple of times and said, yes, Jesus, we need Jesus. Amen. You know, he gets excited. I don't know what happened to him, but I know he has to live around there because he's always at again. That guy, that guy has boldness. I don't I think, think he woke up this morning and said, hey, you know, I'm going to go sit on that curb. I don't, I don't care what people say about him. I don't, I don't care if they call me weird. weird. I don't care what they call me. I'm going to tell them they need Jesus. That's, That's just, just a different kind. kind. Now, I'm, I'm not telling all of us to go sit at our school tomorrow and say we need Jesus. I'm saying that's what he's called to do. We're all called to do something. Bury your cross. Right? Bury it. I mean, we all have different talents in here. Not, not everybody's, everybody's a preacher. preacher. Not everybody's, everybody's a singer. Not everybody's a prayer warrior. warrior. But we, we all, all have talents, talents amen? amen? We, we all, all have, have something to give back to God. God. I, love I love that. The cross means one thing. I want to say that. The cross means one thing. You think about it. The one thing it means death. That's what it means. Jesus went to that cross knowing he was going to die. We bear our cross and we're going to die as self. See, we die as self when we bury it every day. That's why Jesus says carry it every day. It's not just one time. Because we think we can die one time. Oh, I got me. I'm born again. Woohoo! I can do whatever I want. No, Jesus says you need to die daily. Because we get a lot of crud during this world. We go to work, we go to places, and it gets piled up. He gets get piled on, on and we get mad at things, and we start getting grouchy, and we start getting things, and then all of a sudden, sudden we need to get washed again. again. And we get on our knees and we say, Lord, forgive me, I shouldn't have like that. Or is it just me? Why am I always preaching at myself up here? I'm like, Lord, I know if I'm feeling it, I know everybody's got to be going through something. I mean, Jesus was the only one that walked the straight, perfect, sinless life. Only Jesus Christ. Only Jesus, not Paul, not Moses, only Jesus walked a perfect life. So everyone from Jesus behind him has the same problems as we had. We all had faults. All of them. Every prophet had a fault. Every apostle had a fault. You know, let me go read the apostles' lives. Start with Peter. Start with James. Go with them. Look at them. But they were not afraid to preach Jesus. Even if death was right here in front of them, they were still going to preach Jesus. Nothing can shut them up to proclaim Jesus Christ because they knew they were saved from this world because they bear their cross. Amen? Amen. The disciples must follow Jesus even to the place of taking his cross. When a person took a cross in Jesus' day, it was for one reason, to die. We know that. We don't have crucifixion today. We, I'm, I'm thankful for that. It's a horrible death. I'm glad they didn't pick that for one of the deaths and put people on cross up there. But in his day, the disciples knew, if you're going to carry a cross, you're going to die. And see, that's a perfect example of what I'm trying to talk about. If we're to bear a cross, we know we're going to die as flesh. I'm not talking as a person. To die, because the cross didn't negotiate, it didn't compromise, it didn't deal. There was no looking back when you look up on the cross. Your only hope was the resurrection life. That's the only hope we have when we go to the cross today is the resurrection life of Jesus the Christ. Amen? When we have Jesus, we have life. I'm telling you, if it wasn't for the resurrection, your belief is in vain. The Bible, the Bible tells, tells you it was because of his resurrection. resurrection. When, when we look and bear our cross today, it's because of the resurrection life. So I have life. And, and I have it abundantly, the Bible says. And, and I need to give it out abundantly. And I need the people to see that I have life. How many of you would like me to be up here like this? You guys are sinners. Come on. I have life, not death. We are sinners. We know that. That's, That's why, why we need Jesus. Need Jesus. I don't need to tell a sinner he's a sinner. Do, Do I believe in sin? Yes. Have we all sinned? Yes. yes. The Bible says we all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. There's nobody in there has not sinned. If you think you haven't sinned, you need to repent. We all have sinned. It says there's not a righteous man upon this earth. Not one. Listen to me. Don't look around and think you're holier than someone next to you because it says there's not one righteous man upon this earth. 
Okay? okay? Even, Even in the Old Testament, Testament says, says that. that. There's not, not a just man upon this earth that doeth good and sinneth not. There's not one just man upon this earth that doeth good and sinneth not. Why do you think we need Jesus? And when you get Jesus, you're filled with joy because of what he has done for you and what he will do for you and what he's going to do for you and where he's going to lead you. There's a place. He's not giving up. Just because you don't look good today doesn't mean tomorrow he's not going to do it. God has perfect timing for each one of us. And he knows where we need to be. Amen? And he, I'm glad it's God that molds me and not you guys. Get, get your, your eyes, eyes off the pastors and the people and get your eyes back on Jesus and you'll see your life change. Because, because I'm, I'm telling you, this pastor will fail you. you. I'm not up here to be a prophet or say something. I know I'm a man just as you people are. I know that I face the same sins and I put my clothes on the same way you do and I drink my water the same way. And I take a shower the same way you guys do. I'm no better and I'm no worse. I was a sinner and I'm saved by grace. And, and the, the reason, reason I'm up here is because of Jesus Christ. Christ. says, Son, preach the gospel. And do not compromise my word. Don't take it and water it down. If I tell you to tell them to repent, tell them to repent. If I tell you there's a hell, tell them there's a hell. If I tell you to tell them there's a heaven, tell them there's a heaven. If I tell them to walk, walk. If I tell you to tell them to carry their cross and bear it every day, they need to carry their cross and bear it every day. See, See, we, we have, have to listen to what the Holy Spirit, Spirit tells us to do. And, and I tell you, you'll get so much more out of the gospel if you listen to the gospel and listen to what Christ has for you. It'll, It'll be, be so, so much, much better when you read his words and his words speak to you. And, and they come off the page. And you can just see him filling you up and saying, oh, I missed that. <laughs> oh, boy. I need a change. Come on. How many of you woke up and said, hey, I need to change my life a little bit? Come on. We all do that. Some, Some of us can get up and say, man, man I, I wish I wasn't as angry all the time. Or get up and say, man, I wish I could drive without, without getting mad at Santa Maria. Maria. Okay? <laughs> I wish, I pray, I pray, not wish, <laughs> maybe, maybe I wish, <laughs> that I don't get mad at the car in front of me so much. Stop, Stop telling, telling them they need to learn, learn how to drive. drive. I know my, my weaknesses. weaknesses. You know, you know, if it, it says, says 55, 55, I always say, if it, it says 55, go 55. 55. Why are you doing 25, 25 and 55? Lane, I, don't I don't understand people. people. But it's but not it's my job to understand. It's God's, God's job. job. I know I, know I have my faults. Maybe, Maybe I should drive more. more. I might, I might be holier. Be <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I just I filled up the joy today. today. <laughs> I, I, I just know, know driving, driving sometimes, sometimes then you guys would be saying any times I, 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 I get frustrated, frustrated at people. people. And, and it's, it's not, not right to be there. At least, least I admit, at least I, I least confess where I'm at. at. I, don't I don't try, try to hide it. it. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm not trying, trying to be Rocky, Rocky Racer, Racer out there. I'm just, I'm just trying to drive my own life. I'm trying to carry my cross without the people in front of me tripping it. I wonder if I would have hollered at him back at Jesus and say, pick up your cross. You're going, You're going too slow with that thing. I can get you to the field. field. That kind of makes you think a little different, different doesn't it? it? As, As a driver, driver I'm like, like Lord, Lord, help me. <laughs> sometimes I'm a little crazy with that. Anyway, anyway I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I, 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 didn't I didn't mean to get, to get off, off, but you know, sometimes, sometimes we, have we have to think about our own life, life how, how we drive, drive how we go. go. You know, driving. Then Rocky walks in right when I'm talking about driving. It's a blessing that Rocky's, Rocky's here today. today. I, I, I want to say, say that, that, you know, I, I wasn't going to bring anything up, but a couple of nights ago, Rocky got reared in and going very fast. And, and I, I guarantee you, Rocky, Rocky was driving, driving thinking, hey, hey tonight's, tonight's night, someone's, someone's just going to hit me in and take off. off. It's, it's the, the same, same thing with us. us. We, we don't, don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. We don't know what's going to happen when we drive home. But the thing I know today is I have Jesus Christ. And, and when, when I leave these doors, doors I'm, I'm going to take, take Jesus with me. I'm not going to leave him in this church. And, and I'm, I'm going to bear my cross when I go out there. If, if I trip like, like Jesus and I get fatigued, I hope there's someone out there that will help me carry my cross as I will help you guys. guys. That's called brotherly and sisterly love. When we can pick up someone else's cross and say, hey, we can do this. As they did with Jesus, they got into the hill to die. I'm praying that we can do the same for people. 
that we will love them enough to be there for them when they fall. Don't be the person that goes like this when they fall. I knew we would do that. Or laugh at them when they fall. Be the person that will get down there and put their heads on their lap and just comfort them to get back up. Because remember, you were there one time. Come on. Are we so holy now we forget where we come from? That's why the Bible says remember where you come from. Because I know where I come from was a pretty life, but I know where I'm at today is because of Jesus. Amen. Paul writes to the Corinthians in chapter 2. Chapter 2, I mean, I'm sorry, Galatians. If you're in Corinthians, go to 2 Corinthians, and the next book would be Galatians. Say amen when someone gets here so I can read. Because it's, it's getting, getting hot, hot in here, or at least it's getting hot, hot up here. here. Amen. Amen. It, it says there, I am, now Paul speaking to him, says, says, I am what? Crucified with Christ. I am crucified with Christ. He is acknowledging that I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. He's saying, yeah, yeah, yeah look, I know I've been crucified. I'm dead. I went to the cross. I died. I died. If you, you want to know what he's talking about, about go to the couple verses before. He's, he's talking about the law. But if but you if look, look at that, he says, the law didn't die. die. He died to the law. I want, I want you, you to grab, grab that. that. The, the law was always perfect. perfect. Once, Once he, he saw, saw the law, he said, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. There's, There's no, no way I can keep this law. law. I'm an ungodly, unholy person. I have to die to that law. And, and I, I have, have to be, be crucified, crucified with Christ and take on Christ, which is the law, and be Christ-like. Because he knows I can't keep the law. That's, that's what his fight was here. That's why he said, I am crucified. Because, because if you read the two chapters, he's telling them, look at They all want to put the law back on us. You've got to live by the law. You've got to live by this way. You've got to do this. 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 I only got to do what Christ tells me to do. Did you hear what I'm saying? Legalistic has destroyed people's lives and churches for them to be legalized and saying you can't do this, you can't do this. Listen, I serve the same God you serve. And I guarantee you, when I woke up this morning, the Holy Spirit told me what I could do and can't do. When I'm messing up, guess who's there in my ears saying, don't do this, huh? It's not you. Guess who it is? It's the Holy Spirit. That's, That's the, the blessing, blessing of serving God. God. He, he cares, cares about, about you. you. Sometimes, Sometimes we tune him out. And, and we, we end up in left field with snowshoes, snowshoes on. on. It's, it's not, not a pretty sight. sight. But, but guess, guess what? what? Jesus, Jesus is out there with us. He, he says, says, listen, you're, you're out, out here, here, but I'm going to pick you up again and take you back where you're supposed to be. And he will keep you on that daily. Take you back where you're supposed to be. He doesn't give up on you. People, let's not give up on each other. Let's, Let's love each other. Let's lift up each other. Not everybody's where you're at. I said that in the beginning. Listen, we're all in a different spot in Christ. Let people grow how Christ wants them to grow, not how you want them to grow. It's a big difference when we say, hey, look, you should be better. Why aren't you closer to God? Well, who am I? Who made me the Holy Spirit? Well, well, I'd be an example of how you can be closer to Christ. When, when I can live that life and be an example of who Jesus is in your life, maybe you will be closer to Christ. But if the pastor's not being an example to his people out in the church, as that under-shepherd, then maybe that's the problem today. See, the shepherd had two things called a rod and it called a staff. One was a pull and one was a beat. I'm just, just going to use that, that word. word. One was, was the beat you. you. Spare the rod and spoil the child. See, See one, one was, was to take the sheep and beat them back in the spot. They would tap them. The other one was to hook them around the neck and pull them. Or around the leg. Now I've had both done. done. Sometimes the Lord had to pull me around the neck and pull me back in. The other time he had to and hit me upside the head with a two-by-four. That's me, not you guys. But, but he, he does, does it because he loves me. He keeps putting me back where I need to be. Aren't we thankful, thankful for a God that loves you that much, that, that he doesn't, doesn't give up on you the first time you fall? Amen? He's there. 
I love, I love that, that about, about him. him. That's, That's why, why Paul, Paul says, I am crucified with Christ, Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I. He, he made, made a decision. decision. It's, it's not the old man that lives. Not, not the old man. He goes, look this. But it's Christ that liveth in me. In the life which I now live in this flesh, I live by the faith that's in the Son of God who loved me and who gave himself for me. The body of sin is destroyed, is what he's telling him. I have been crucified with Christ. Yeah, you see me as Paul, and you guys look up at me and say, well, there's Lulu, there's Blaine, there's the pastor. See, that's what you see. But I have died as old Blaine, and I have put the new Blaine on, which is Christ, that new creature. I become a new creature in Christ. Old things are passed away. The old new things are becoming. It says they're becoming. That means each day I am still learning. Okay, I don't have it all down. I don't have all the answers to this great and mighty book because every day it's new. Every, Every day, day it's new. new. The, the word, word is living. living. I don't care how, how many times I speak, I speak it today, today tomorrow it's going to say something different to me. Because I, I need to hear that tomorrow as well as you need to hear today that if you don't bear your cross and follow him, you have nothing to do with him. That's a hard speaking. That's not me preaching or bringing condemnation down on you. I'm just telling you what Jesus said. If you take up and die daily, you're his disciples. Easy as that. But if but you, you think, think you can do it on your own, I'll come, come back, back next week and I'm going to ask you how did that work out. Because it ain't going to work out very good. Because how many of us tried to battle something on our own? And how did it work out for you? Because some of us are probably still trying to battle it. But once we give it away, he takes it. And then you're trying, you know, a couple months later, man, I haven't had that problem, or I'm fighting that thoughts, or I, well, what happened? Oh, you got to get to him. I'm not trying to battle it. it. And then the enemy comes with something else at you. That's why we put the formula on. I had a dream the other day. I was sleeping in the other room. I walked the dog over in the morning, so after I walked the dog, I go in the other room, and I kind of meditated there. And I remember this. It was weird. I was... Doing with, with that guy, guy at the I was preaching the gospel, and this guy came up to me and he was starting to put a cross on my face. So I told him, Are you a lost or are you a saved? And I started explaining Jesus Christ to him because he looked religious, he acted religious. So I had to ask him, Are you saved? Are you a saved Baptist or are you a lost Baptist? Are you, are you a saved, saved Pentecostal, Pentecostal or are you a lost Pentecostal? Pentecostal? Are, you are, you Catholic, Catholic, or are you a saved Catholic or are you a lost Catholic? Catholic? And as soon as I said that, automatically, automatically in the spirit, something come out and said, some very bad words about Jesus. And started getting very, very, very spiritually. And I woke up and I was like, start praying. That was a spiritual battle happening in the spirit. I don't, I don't like, like waking up after dreams, dreams but, but I was on top of the hill, hill not at the bottom, because I fought the enemy with the word of God, and I won. Because it's his word that wins, it's not blame. Do we still have dreams? I have dreams like that once in a while where I'm battling in the spirit. And you know when something in your dream says Jesus Christ, and then says something bad after that, and then says something else, you know that's not you. That's, That's an, an evil, evil spirit trying to get you off of the mind of Christ. Christ. That's, That's why, why it's important to get into your own little closet and meditate and pray and fight this, this evilness that's around us. You guys, listen, the unseen, the unseen is more real than the seen. You, you don't think, think that there's enemies out there trying to destroy your life? You, you need, need to wake up. up. The Bible the tells you all about it. it. Maybe, Maybe pastors aren't preaching it to you and teaching it, but you need to wake up. You never know. What, what he's, he's throwing, throwing at you. you. Rocky he didn't know he was going to get an accident the other day. day. He didn't know he was going to get hit, did you, Rocky? Didn't, didn't think, think nothing about it. it. Bam! Shook, Shook his, his life. life. You, you never know how the enemy is trying to destroy you. Because he, he comes, comes to kill, destroy, and to rob what you have. have. Be, Be prayed of all the time. So when something happens like that, you can thank God, wow, I should be dead. But God in his grace kept me alive. The enemy tried to attack me. But, but he, he put, put a shield, shield around, around me. me. Amen. Amen.
It's a perfect thing when you look at that. Ephesians 4.24 says this. It says, and that you put on the new man. And that, that you put, put on the new man, man which, which after God, God is created, listen to me, which, which after God is created in righteousness and in true holiness. holiness. That's, That's the man we're to put on. You hear me? Amen? See, See, that's, that's what, what I love about Paul. He, he knows what it is because, because I was thinking the other day, I was saying this to myself, myself. I, I do the things I don't want to do and the things I want to do, I don't do. Why is that? The things that I don't want to do, I do all the time. But the things I want to do, I can't do. How many of you been there? Oh, I want to be doing this. But you don't get there because you do the things you don't want to do. Paul thought the same, exactly the same thing. He wrote about it. I do, I do the things, things I don't, don't want to do. do. I, I wake, wake up every morning and do things I don't want to do. do. Especially driving. driving. <laughs> I really lowered my head this time. Driving. <laughs> you, the enemy's got, got me on, me on that, that one. one. Got a bad Lord, Lord, I'm giving it to you today. today. Okay. okay. Anyway, let's, let's finish this. this. Which, Which is after true holiness. holiness. I'm, I'm thankful, thankful for that, that new man. man. After, After that you have put, put on the new man, man who he who has a new mind within him is a new, new man. man. He, he was born anew of the water and of the spirit. spirit. That's, That's in John 3, 5. You must be born again in John 3, 3. You must, he told Nicodemus. Nicodemus was a leader. Of the, he was 70 of the Sanhedrin. I told him about him the other day. Here was a guy that we would see coming down the street. Oh, Nicodemus. He's, he's one of those, those high dudes. Man, he's, he's religious. religious. And Jesus, Jesus told him, no, you, you must be born again. again. How do you think he felt? Wait, Wait a minute. minute. I serve you. I know the scriptures. I quote the verses. verses. Come on. I, don't, I, I fast, fast twice a week. week. I do everything you ask me to do. No, no, Nicodemus. If you're not born again, you cannot see the kingdom of heaven. Verse 5 says, Nicodemus didn't understand that. He questioned him. And I told you about that last week. He had said, do I have to go back into the womb and be born again? And Jesus says, no. One must be born of water, this birth that we're in, and one needs to be born of the Spirit before he can enter into the kingdom of God. You need to be born back again in the Spirit, back into his kingdom, before you can enter into his kingdom. That means being born again. I have, I have a testimony. testimony. I, I know, know when I was born again. again. I, I knew, knew when the old man was taken off and the new man came in. Man. I, knew I knew what I was stripped of. When, when I said I was lost but I'm found, that was true. When, when I say I'm saved, saved, I know what I was saved from. from. A, a lot, lot of junk. A lot, a lot of junk died on that cross that night. But that didn't mean the next day they need to pick that cross back up. See, See, this, this is, is what he's saying. saying. When, when you, you put, put on Christ, you're putting on the true righteousness, that true man, and that, that true holiness. That's, that's what we need to put on. Amen? Amen. Help, Help the pastor out up here. This is getting kind of quiet in here. Is it hot? Yeah, everybody's fan. You don't see me fan. It's hot out up here. It's hot. A new, a newly created in righteousness. This is still part of what they taught. Ephesians 4.21. The new creation described took place at conversion. When you're converted back into the kingdom of God, you become a new creature. 2 Corinthians 5.17. That's what he taught them. Therefore, if they have received Christ, they be Come new creatures in him. Old things are passed away. Remember I said that? New things become new. When you receive Jesus Christ, you repent of your sins. You ask him to come into your life, forgive you of your ways. He comes into your life. He fills you. He puts a new man in you. And then he says, now crawl. He didn't say run. I'll give you a little bit of milk so you will grow. We see new babies and we want to stub a shake, a stake down their mouth. Until, Until they, they choke, choke and die. God, God gave us milk when we became babies, babies in Christ. Christ. How many of you were running as soon as you become a newborn new again? Man, I had to, I had to just, just use the milk, milk of the word. And I was just filling myself and getting full every day. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes I had to burp. I ate too much of it and didn't understand it. it. But God, God just gives you enough that you can grow. And you learn to crawl. And guess what? Next time, I'm learning to stand. Real wobbly, just, just like, like a baby. And next, next thing, thing I'm doing, I'm, I'm taking, taking my first step in Christ. Christ. Hey, I, I know a little. 
Next, next thing, thing, I'm picking, picking off the running. running. And next, next thing, thing, Paul says, now, now get off the milk and get on to the solids. There's a time you need to wean yourself off the milk. And you need to get on to the solid word. And watch me do a work within your life. Amen. That's the God I serve. He cares for you. He loves you. He knows where you're at. And I keep saying that so you understand. He knows where you're at. Doesn't matter what the person next to you think you're at. It matters what God knows where you're at. Amen. I want, I want to, to finish, finish with, with Romans, Romans, a couple of verses, verses here. I said I would, I would try to cut it out, but I'm not going to ever quench the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Romans. Romans. Well, well, I, I, I do, do want to say this in Luke. I'm sorry. I do want to say Luke 9, 62. 62. It says, and Jesus said unto them, them no, no man, having put, put his hand to the plow, and looking back, back is fit for, for the kingdom of God. God. A person, a person who holds the plow cannot keep a straight furrow if he's looking behind them. If you've done a garden, you're trying to make a straight line. You're trying to walk a straight line. You're trying to make a furrow so you can plant your garden. Amen? Jesus says, if you're trying to plant that and continue looking back at your old life, and say, boy, I wish I was back there. I wish I was doing those things. Your line is going to be like this. Now I can ask each one of us how many of our path in Christ is like this. And, and then, then all of a sudden, sudden we're like, oh, Lord, Lord help, help me. And we're like this. And we, and we go, go for a while, and hit a bump, bump, and we go like this. Lord, Lord help, help me. Boom, we're going like this. We hit a bump. That's, 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 that, every, every time we hit a bump, it's helping us to grow. grow. Sometimes, Sometimes in the valley doesn't mean the worst thing. thing. That's, that's usually the time God, God is speaking to you. Again. We all want to be on top of the mountain. But sometimes in the valley is where it's the worst. And that's when we're listening to God help me. Amen. That's, That's what he's, what he's saying, saying there. So, so I just, just wanted, wanted to say, say that. that. If you're, you're putting, putting your hands in the plow, it means if you're saying, I am taking up my cross, and I'm going to follow Jesus, and I'm going to plow this field, don't, don't be looking back at the world constantly. Be looking straight ahead. Amen. Amen. Romans 6 6 says this. Romans 6 6. Says this. Knowing this. That, that our old man is crucified, crucified with, with him. him. Okay, okay, I'll say it. Let me see if I can hear anybody. Knowing this, this, that the old man is crucified with him. That's when you say amen. amen. I don't I have, have a little sign up here that says amen. amen. But, but it's it telling you that, that your old man has been crucified with Christ. Christ. Amen. amen. Good night. night. How many you like your old man? Then, then your old man has been crucified, crucified with Christ. Christ. Yeah. There you, you go. go. Amen. 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 Our, Our sinful and corrupted nature, nature that's what that's talking about. about. That, that the, the body, body of sin might be destroyed, destroyed that, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Hallelujah. We, we didn't, didn't come in here today to serve sin, sin did we? we? And we're and not, not leaving today to serve sin. sin. Amen. I didn't wake up this morning and said, I want to serve sin. I woke, I woke up this morning and said, Lord, help, help me to walk through this world. world. I need I to bear my cross, but my knees are getting bloody sometimes. I'm falling. Help, help me. me. Amen? Amen? Romans 6, 6 7 says, says this. I mean, I'll, 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 I'll throw another verse. It, it says, lie not to one another, another seeing, seeing that you have put off the old man in his deeds. Colossians 3, 9. 9. He says, lie not to one another. You have put off the old man in his deeds. Let's, Let's be truthful to one another. another. If, if you need help, help, ask for it. If you need prayer, prayer ask for it. Hey, look, none, none of us is perfect in here. It's, it's okay, okay to say, hey, I need help. Pray, pray for me. You don't have to confess, confess your sins, but it says, says confess your faults to one another, that they may pray for you, you that you, you might be healed. Amen? Amen. Because of the faithful prayer of a what? Righteous man. Avail as much. We need to pray and lift each other up. It's, it's okay, okay to confess. confess. You don't have to say what you're doing. doing. Just say, hey, look, I need help. help. Pray, Pray for me. I mean, you know, a lot of us do that. Kim will always text me. He'll say, hey, brother, pray for me. He's, He's not, not afraid, afraid to text me and say, hey, I need prayer. Pray for me. He didn't, he didn't have, have to tell me what he was doing. I just know I need to pray for my brother. It's okay to do that, to say, hey, we need each other. Amen. We need to help each other. We need to pray for each other. We need to lift each other up. We become a stronger body when we do this. We, we stop, stop judging, judging and we start helping and we start learning to hug. Instead of going, if you do this, you do this. No, just pray for me. 
I'm, I'm telling, telling you right, right now, now, you can, can never, never pray, pray for someone you can gossip about. about. Try it. Try, Try praying to the, the Father and gossip about someone in the prayers. prayers. Don't, Don't go, go very well, does it? Because it, it shuts, shuts off, off real quick. quick. Then you, you start, start weeping within, within your soul, soul asking for yourself. yourself. If you, if you want to pray for someone, someone, pray that God will bless them, them or God will help them. them. Lift, Lift them up. Put, put people in their life to show them the truth. That's, that's how you pray, pray for people. people. If they're if sick, pray, pray for health. health. If, if they're, they're falling, be there, there to help them get up. up. Don't, Don't kick, kick them. them. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, so Romans 6, 7, 7 says that for he that is dead is free from sin. Amen. 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 See, Colossians 3, 1 says, if you've been risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sits on the right hand of God. Set your affections on the things above and not on this earth. We talked about that yet last week when I talked about the world. Romans 6, 8 says this, now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we should also live with him. When I woke up this morning, I'm smiling because I know I'm going to live with Christ. I didn't, I didn't come, come in here, here sucking, sucking on a lemon. lemon. Amen. There was, there was joy, joy in my heart, heart this morning. morning. I don't I know why, but I had joy. joy. You know, yes. stop, stop biting, biting the lemon and start, start getting, getting orange or something. Or something. That makes you smile. Amen. Amen. I'm, I'm trying to get an amen. It, it ain't working. It, it says, says here, knowing that Christ, in verse 9, Romans 6, 9, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dies no more, death has no more dominion over him. Verse 10. For in that he died, he died into sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Verse 11. Likewise, reckon you also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Christ Jesus our Lord. Verse 12, lack not, lack not sin, therefore reign in your mortal bodies, that you should obey it in the lust thereof. See, sin has lust. There's lust in sin. You can lust after a chocolate cake. You can lust after a nice hot rod. I've seen a lot of nice cars yesterday. I mean, we can lust after the opposite sex. We can lust after... Who we, we want, want to be the, the next, next president. president. There's, There's ways, ways we, we can lust. lust. It doesn't, doesn't always, always have to be about man and female. female. It's, it's about, about a lot, lot of things that's, that's in our heart, heart that we lust after. after. And, that's and that's what he's, what he's talking, talking about, about here. here. What does Psalms 119, 130 says? Order my steps in thy word. And let not any iniquity, iniquity have dominion over me. If, if I get, get my steps order in his word, then no dominions of sin is going to have over me. I mean, sin won't have no dominion over me because I'm in his word. Wow. That's a promise. That's a promise. Verse 13, Romans, Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourself unto God and those that are alive from the dead, which we were dead, now we're alive because of resurrection. Amen? We're alive. Hallelujah. And your members as an instrument of righteousness unto God. We are to live unto God in the right way of righteousness. Righteousness means the right way of God or, you know, in his way. Not, Not in our way. way. It's, it's his, his righteousness, righteousness that covers me. me. Not, Not mine, because there's, there's no righteousness, righteousness in me. There's none righteous. Remember, it's only because of Christ. Christ. When, when I'm in Christ, it's his righteousness. righteousness. We have we to understand, understand that. that. Verse, Verse 14. 14. For, For sin, sin, if you, you have, have a Bible, Bible underline his verse. verse. If you believe, you, you, you know, if you have, have if you're okay, underline it in your word, underline it. It says this For sin shall have no dominion. Over you, you, for you're, you're not, not under the law, but under grace. Sin shall not have dominion over you anymore because you're in Christ. You are not walking around as a sinner no more. You're walking around as the children of the Most High God. You were a sinner saved by grace. Remember that. Remember that. For by grace you are saved through faith. That, that not, not of yourself. yourself. It's, it's not, not of yourself. yourself. It's not, not by, by your works. 
It's, it's only by God. God. It's, it's nothing, nothing you can do to get you saved. It's only who Christ is. is. And when, when we can we realize our righteousness is filthy as rags, then we understand his righteousness we need. And when we, we put his righteousness in, then people are drawn to you. When they see our righteousness, it's not pretty. Actually, it smells. But when we put on Christ, it's a whole new life. It's a life that we want to live. That's, That's what he, he talks, talks about. about. Now, now you understand, understand when you bury your, your Christ, cross, cross, it is to follow, follow Christ in the completeness of who he is. It means to die of that old blame and live the new life in Christ. And I have to do that every day. Every morning I wake up, I have to say, Blaine, you have to die. Because who you were will creep back in. I have to die daily. I have, I have to take, take that, that cross and say, here you go. I'm, I'm going to know, know what the cross means. Disgrace, shame, shame. And it means ultimately death of the old man. Because, because the old man comes in constantly. I know that. Because I, 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 I battle that all the time the old man jumps in. He always is jumping in. But the one thing is when Christ gets there, when we say, Christ, take this over, it's peace within your life. Because where, where God is, is there is, is no confusion. confusion. And, and if, if you're, you're confused, confused about something, then you don't have God. Now, now I'm, I'm saying that to the world. World, world listen, listen to me. me. There, there is, is no confusion, confusion in God. God. You're, you're not, not confused, confused about, about your sex. sex. That's, That's from, from the enemy. enemy. That's, That's not of God. Because God, God says he is not the author of confusion. Of confusion. If you're, if you're confused, confused about, about something, something, then you need to get on your knees and go to God. God. I say that with all the love I can. Because it's so true. We've got so many teenagers out there confused. Don't know if they're this, don't know if that. You know, somewhere they said, did, did you say the right pronoun? I said, yeah, yeah God made man and female. And they, they know it at birth. That's, that's when the doctor looks, looks and says, yep, this is a male, yep, this is a female. That's all they tell. There's no pronoun there. There's a the part that God made to tell, tell the difference between a man and a female. And that's, and that's what, what he made, and that's the way it is today, and that's the way it's always going to be. be. There's, there's no confusion, confusion in that, amen? I mean, there, there is, there is no, no confusion. confusion. It's, it's only confusion when we let the enemy take our minds over. over. And we, we don't, don't know what we are because our parents says, well, you can be whatever you want. Parents need to repent today and get right with Jesus. Your kids are only going to be as good as you are. Because you, they they might be, be, you might be the only Christ they will ever see. Are you Are living that example for them to see? That's, that's what, what I'm talking about today. Because sometimes, sometimes I fail, and then I need to repent. Lord, help, help me to be a better person. person. Help, help me to be a better person in your son, Jesus Christ. Christ. Help, help me to put his righteousness back on. Help me put the new man back on. Because the old man creeped in here, and I was following him for a while. And, and I, I guarantee, guarantee you, every one of us in here follows the old man once in a while. I'm, I'm telling you, if you think you're more right and more holy, then you're in the wrong church. Because we're, we're a church that needs help, help, amen? And, and I, I walk, walk in here today needing to die of blame and need to be living in Christ. Christ. And I know and when, when I, I walk, walk out of here, i got to say, Christ, help me to walk out of here. Help me to fill my steps. I need you where I'm going. I need to let people see Jesus in me. Do you hear that? Jesus, Jesus needs, needs to be seen, seen in me, no matter where I'm at. Sometimes, Sometimes I, don't I don't act like Jesus. Jesus. Sometimes, Sometimes I act like Blaine, and I have to repent of that and say, Lord, I didn't do very good this time. But the good thing is I can take my cross back up and go again, because I died again. That's, That's the grace that I have in Jesus the Christ. That's his mercy that he doesn't give up. And I want to say that. Remember, Jesus will not forsake you. He will not leave you. And I, and I want, want you to walk, walk out of here with that confidence, knowing that, hey, I might mess up, but I have a Savior, I have a Lord, I have a God that loves me. Amen? Should have been a little louder than that, but that's okay. I'll take that. That was pretty good. Next week, we'll work on our amens. Praise God. I just want to tell you something. I'm glad I came today. Because, you know, when you start studying about the cross, and how I'm supposed to walk, I find out it's not Blaine's walk, it's his walk. I find out I need to die before I start walking in Jesus. 
because some, some of us want to take and say, I can do this on my own. own. You can't. can't. Someone's thinking that maybe there's not a Jesus. There really is. One of the most talked about people ever is Jesus Christ. You think about it, he lived in a little dirt hole called Nazareth. He didn't go very far. How is he known today? They didn't have any of this stuff back then. They didn't have telephones. They didn't have anything. But yet the most talked person is the one that split time. The one that was born. Remember, Remember that song, song that was sung? Mary, did you know the face that you kiss? kiss? Is the, the one that actually created you? Think about that. That's, That's the God that we served. He, he took, took time out of heaven to say, look, they ain't getting it. Now I'm, I'm talking, talking to my hill book talk now. They ain't getting it. I'm going to have to become them and show them that they can get it. So, so he'd become, become one of us to live like us and die like us, a horrible death, so we can live in him. Hallelujah. I have hope today when I walk out of here, and it's called who? Jesus. Jesus. Remember, it's all about Jesus. Let's bow our heads. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank that you speak to us every time we come here, Father. I thank you for your encouragement today, knowing that we can walk because of your son, Jesus. I thank, I thank you for what you're going to do in the people's life that showed up today and how you're going to change them daily, Father. I thank you for the people that you're working on right now and you're molding and shaping, Father. And you're just taking that heart of flesh out and putting the heart back in that you want in there. I thank you for that, Father. Put the new spirit in each man in here and female, Father. I ask that. Touch from the youngest to the oldest, Father. Help us to walk. Bless the hearers, Father. As I always say, those that hear his word and keep it, bless are them. Help, Help us, us to, to keep, keep your word as we walk out here, Father, so we can be more blessed because of your word. Thank, Thank you. you. In the name, In the name of, of Jesus, Jesus, and we all say, Amen. Amen. Oh, man.